We're gonna start off by reducing two cups of apple cider down to a one cup of apple cider. You wanna do this so that way it will allow there to be less liquid and more sweetness from the apple cider. So you're just gonna let, bring it to a boil and then let it kind of simmer for about 15 minutes until it's reduced down to one cup. Then we are going to start by adding in our all-purpose flour into our bowl. And I don't have any substitutes for gluten-free, but you could try using gluten-free all-purpose. We're gonna add in organic brown sugar. We're gonna add in some cinnamon, allspice, and salt. We're gonna add in baking soda and baking powder into here. This is what's going to help rise because we are not using any yeast in this recipe and you're just going to whisk it up until everything is mixed together. Once it's all mixed together, we're gonna to add in our melted vegan butter. I'm using one from Earth Balance. We're gonna add in some vegan yogurt. I'm using the Siggy's vanilla and cinnamon non-dairy yogurt. We're gonna add in that reduced down apple cider and we're gonna add in vanilla extract. And then you're just going to carefully mix this up until it is well combined. You don't wanna overmix, but obviously make sure that you get all the flour, that everything is mixed together really nicely. It is going to be a very sticky dough, which is exactly what we're going for. We're going to cover this with plastic wrap and put it in the fridge for at least an hour or up to eight hours. Then you're going to remove the plastic wrap and it, the dough is still going to be sticky, okay? But it is much firmer now and held together better. So it's still sticky as you can see it's stuck right to my fingers but it, it holds its shape better so i'm going to use a dough scraper to help me with making these donut bites i'm placing it on a very well floured surface keep a lot of all-purpose flour around and if you don't have a dough scraper i really encourage you to get one they're super cheap i'll link one down below in the description box but you could also like be very careful and use a very large knife but obviously knives are sharp so just please do that carefully if you decide to use a knife otherwise just get the dough scraper so i'm constantly dipping the dough scraper in flour Flour, so that way it doesn't stick and we're going to start by dividing the dough in half and then I just kind of cut a long piece of dough and then I'm going to make little cuts and make my bites and then from there once I was looking at those pieces some of them look a little bit big and I'll cut them later on but this was the best way I found to work with the dough since it is so sticky now of course if you want to make regular sized donuts you of course can just flatten it out and then you can start to cut out your donuts from there we're going to spray the air fryer basket with some cooking spray I'm using actually a coconut oil spray and then I popped in as many as I could you want to give them a little bit of room because they will rise and puff up once I got them all in there I just gave it one more spray of spray oil this just helps them to get that little nice crispy outside and then you're going to cook them at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for seven minutes and just repeat the process I got 70 donut bites from this and I have a air fryer that has two baskets so it went by pretty quick. It'll just depend on your basket size. And then we're gonna dip them in some melted vegan butter, and then we're gonna roll them around in cinnamon sugar, which is so delicious. Who doesn't love a little cinnamon sugar? And look at that beautiful little donut bite. So you're just going to repeat the process until you make them all. This part's a little bit tedious, but obviously we love cinnamon sugar and we need it in our lives. If you decide to deep fry them, then you don't need to stick it in the melted vegan butter because it will already have the oil on it. To start off our cakes, we're going to cream together some vegan butter, vegan sour cream, and organic sugar. As you already know by now, hopefully, organic sugar because non-organic sugar can be processed with bone char. Take a little hand mixer and just mix that up, cream it together until it looks something like this. Kind of thick and creamy and smooth. The sour cream doesn't get completely broken down yet, so don't worry. Add in some non-dairy milk, followed up with a little bit of vanilla extract. Actually, a lot of vanilla extract. These are vanilla cakes. <laughs> and mix this all together again, just combining all the wet ingredients. Add in your baking powder and all-purpose flour, and then you're just going to mix it again. This is going to be a very thick batter, so you definitely want to use a hand mixer or even a stand mixer for this. So it'll look something like this when it's all done. As you can see, it's like really thick, but this is what we want. Add in your frozen cranberries and some chopped up almonds and use a spatula to fold that into the batter. And just take a few seconds to do this because it is so thick, you really want to make sure it's folded in very well so it'll look something like this when you're all done. I'm using this beautiful cake pan and I'll have it linked down below, but you don't have to use this. You could use like a mini loaf pan or a cupcake pan, something like that. So I'm just going to spoon the batter in there and then spread it out with my spoon. Like I said, it's very thick. So I'm just going to help the batter out and just give it a nice spread with the spoon. And the thick batter is what's going to make these cakes actually very light and fluffy later on. I'm cleaning up my cake pan just because I don't like for that stuff to get burnt on there and bake at 350 for 30 minutes. When it's done, let the cakes 
cool for about 10 minutes in their pan before you take them out so this way they're not too warm when you take them out and they don't like lose their shape and structure and they already look so beautiful the way, i love the way the cranberries look and then do a toothpick test comes out nice and clean perfect take a knife to help loosen everything up and then you just want to flip either like a big plate or a board like a cutting board like this right on top of the pan and flip it over you kind of use your knife to help you bang it out and eventually you'll get them out it did take a little bit of work some popped out easier than others but we got them all out and that's all that matters and it looks like this how beautiful is that i love everything the detail on all these snowflakes is so pretty i love that everyone is different and now you can just top them with some powdered sugar just if you like it just makes them look even extra festive and beautiful and that's pretty much it now they're all done and they really were so delicious like they had so much flavor but they were still light and i think the cranberries add that nice tartness to it and it was just very delicious i don't know i think you guys will really like it i love the almonds in there adds a little extra flavor crunch if you can't have nuts just leave them out of course and they're beautiful To start this off, we are going to cream together some vegan butter and organic sugar. Make sure you use organic sugar for this recipe because unfortunately, some recipes, um, some sugars can be processed with bone char, so we don't want that. So use the back of your fork to mash it up until it looks something like this. And then we are going to add in the rest of our wet ingredients. So we have some non-dairy milk, unsweetened, unflavored. We have some vegetable oil we have a vegan egg replacer i like the one from bob's red mill and we're adding in some vanilla extract and then i'm going to get this a little mixed together and then we're going to add in our anise extract in a second so this is like the star of the show this is what gives this cookie its signature flavor in my opinion some people do put lemon in there but you just need a little bit of this anise extract and it's perfect and i like to add not too much in because it can be very overpowering. If you want it to have a stronger flavor, you can add more in the icing later. We'll get there. So then we're gonna add in some baking powder and all-purpose flour and just mix this together until it turns into a dough. Very simple. And when I know it's all done is like when I'm mixing it and it's holding its shape and then I can roll it into a little ball like this, we're done, perfect. So scoop out about a tablespoon per cookie and just roll it into a circle between your hands. Place it on a baking sheet. If you know that your baking sheets kind of stick, add some parchment paper on there. I know that this one does not. And that's it. These are ready to be put in the oven. We're gonna bake them at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 15 minutes. And that's it, that's all you have to do. They're very simple to make, only a few ingredients. And when they come out of the oven, they'll look like this. So you see they kind of flatten a little bit and they get like kind of crackly on top. This is exactly the consistency we're going for. And if you pick them up after you like let them cool for a few minutes, the bottoms will be slightly golden, but really not brown or anything. You, this is kind of a pale cookie. You want it to look like this. So then we're going to make our icing. So I have some powdered sugar here, organic powdered sugar again. I'm going to add in a little bit more of that anise extract. You don't have to do this if you feel that your cookies have enough flavor. You can like taste a cookie before you ice them. And we're going to add in a little bit of water i like to add my water in slowly and just keep mixing because if you get it too runny and not the consistency you want then it's just so annoying to have to keep adding in powdered sugar in my opinion so now we're going to move on to decorating these are the sprinkles i'm using i'll have them linked down below and they are vegan some sprinkles aren't vegan because of the confectioner glaze in them which is made from crushed up beetles which is just gross so just check your sprinkles dip your little cookie into the icing, the glaze, the frosting, whatever you want to call it. Let any excess drip off. I like to do this on a wire rack so that way that excess glaze can drip down. Let the glaze kind of set for a minute and then you can add your sprinkles on top. And make sure to let any of that excess glaze drip off back into the bowl as much as you can so that way you don't run out of frosting. So these are them when they're all done. They are fun, they're pretty, they're festive. You can use any sprinkles you want on top. Obviously I just went with the green, red, and white because it's perfect for this time of year add them to a beautiful serving dish and i know they're like not the most gorgeous cookies but they do look really pretty and they're really easy to make and like i said they are my favorite christmas cookie and i just really wanted to give the recipe some newfound attention and if you've never tried them definitely give them a shot because i think you will really love them they're very good they're light they're kind of cakey they're cookie-ish they're just they're my favorite cookie so give them a try
So to start this recipe off, we are going to chop up one Granny Smith apple. We're gonna cut this up nice and small. I don't mind not peeling my apples before I put them in a baked good. If that is going to bother you, then give them a peel, obviously, and chop it up as small as you can, something like this, put to the side. Let's make our batter. We're gonna combine our dry ingredients. So we have all-purpose flour, baking powder, organic brown sugar, organic granulated sugar, and I have this apple pie spice. It's basically just a blend of nutmeg, allspice, and cinnamon, so that's the same thing you could just use all those spices whisk it up and then add in our wet ingredients so we got vanilla extract vegan yogurt and a non-dairy milk and then i'm just going to mix this up with my spatula and then from there i will give it a nice whisk once i feel it's all well incorporated so whisk it up until it is very very nice and smooth no clumps then we are going to add in our apples and gently fold them into our batter Put that to the side for one second while we make our vegan cream cheese filling. So we have our vegan cream cheese here that I let this soften a little bit on the counter for like 20 minutes while I was working on everything else. Then we are going to add in organic granulated sugar, non-dairy milk, and some maple syrup, and we're gonna mix this together. It'll make the vegan cream cheese filling like lightly sweetened, but not overly sweet because that's kind of the cake's job here, but this will just add a little bit of sweetness. So this is the cake pan I'm using. It isn't it so pretty. I'll have it linked down below in the description box. Like I said earlier, you can use a regular pan. And I'm just gonna give us a nice, very generous coating of spray so i'm going to add in half of the batter to the bottom of the pan and just spread that out really well just make sure it gets into all those little cracks and crevices in this very detailed little pan that we have here then we're going to add in that vegan cream cheese filling i added in a little bit and then i kind of like spread it around and then i add in some more and then i spread it around just to ensure that i'm like getting it evenly distributed amongst the cake and don't worry if the batter and the cream cheese filling kind of mixes together a little bit it's okay add the rest of your batter and make sure that there is a little bit of room on top because obviously our cake is going to rise we're going to bake this at 350 fahrenheit for 55 minutes until a toothpick comes out nice and clean there may be a little bit on the toothpick because of the cream cheese filling but it should be relatively clean so Something like this now let's take our dish flip it do let it cool for a few minutes before you give it a flip and time to reveal look at how beautiful this is are you ready oh my goodness how gorgeous and now let's top it off with some cinnamon sugar just to give it that extra little dazzle and sparkle on top and this is just I think it's beautiful I mean the pan is just gorgeous so the pan does most of the work here but it just isn't it so pretty come on who wouldn't want to eat this I think it is so great for fall and it's just absolutely stunning and now we have to cut inside check out that cream cheese in there so good so delicious and this cake was just absolutely amazing you got to try it hello everyone today we are going to make rice krispie treats they are so easy and so delicious so to start off i am taking three tablespoons of vegan butter and melting that down on a low heat we want to do everything on a low heat and once that is melted down i'm going to add in one bag of vegan marshmallows i'm using the one from the dandies but trader joe's marshmallows are also vegan too and i am just going to cook the marshmallows down until they're melted and look like a nice fluff it's going to take a few minutes to do this on a really really low heat we don't want anything to burn and just be patient and keep giving it a stir so once it really fluffs up and looks something like this you're pretty much good to go so i like my rice krispie treats with more marshmallows and less krispies so they're a little bit gooier so i only add in five cups of vegan rice krispies these are the ones from whole foods and i add them in slowly so first i'm only adding in about three cups because that way i can just kind of gauge how many rice krispies i want to add sometimes you don't want to add all five cups it just depends so you can see here though there's a lot of marshmallow and it's still super gooey so i'm going to add in more i actually did end up adding in all five cups but i just like to do it gradually just in case just to see how things are going that day so I'm just mixing it up with my spatula and we're just gonna let it all mix together and get nice and gooey and perfect. Then I'm adding in a few whole marshmallows just because I like to have a few big marshmallows in there that are kind of warmed up and slightly melted but not complete marshmallow fluff, I guess, like the base of the Rice Krispies, I don't know. And then of course I have to do a little taste test just to make sure. So I'm just lining my little pan with some vegan butter and I'm gonna pop the Rice Krispie Treats down in there and using a spatula that I also put some vegan butter on, I'm just gonna press everything down. The Rice Krispies are very gooey, so adding that butter on there helps just to make sure you don't have any problems. Then I'm going to add on colored sprinkles because why not? Looks pretty, and I'm just gonna take my spatula and press it down just so that way they're really stuck on there. 
let them sit for about 20 minutes and then you can cut into them and make nice squares and that is it these are vegan rice crispy treats very easy to make very delicious and perfect for the holidays perfect to get your kids involved with today we are doing a bake with me i have these adorable tins from nordic wear i have this one from last year and then i just got this one and i wanted to do some fun holiday baking i wanted to make like a vegan eggnog cake i have not tried this recipe we're going to try it out together and hopefully it works so let's get baking so when i was thinking about how i was going to make this recipe i went into my cookbook and i took my vanilla cupcakes recipe and i just kind of like added some things in there and like figured it out like that the first thing we're going to do is use a vegan egg replacer and all you have to do is you just mix this with water this is bob's red mill it's like a potato starch base you could use a flax egg you could use a chia egg you can use there's one from energy but these are good you just mix them with a little water and it works as a binding agent in your recipes we needed to get a little bit of a bigger bowl for that i'm just actually going to pour it all into a one cup measuring cup I always do that. I always pick things that are like too small to mix in. It is a character flaw on my part. So you just mix this with water and it'll thicken and it's great. So we just let this sit to the side for a few minutes and it'll thicken up. Whenever I make cakes or like cupcakes, I always like to use a hand mixer. You can mix this by hand if you don't have one, but I do find it easier to do with the hand mixer. You could use a stand mixer too, but because these are like smaller batches, they're not like a lot of batter. I feel like the stand mix is just too big. So that's why I personally like the hand mixer and you can find some really, really good ones for not that expensive. So I definitely recommend having a hand mixer in your kitchen arsenal. So we're gonna add in all the wet ingredients. I have a nice big bowl here and we'll get started on making our batter. First things first, we need one stick of softened butter. This is half a cup of vegan butter. I'm using, actually it's like a store brand from ShopRite, but you know, you could use the Miyoko, so you can use Earth Balance. Just make sure it's softened like this. So that way it'll churn up really nicely. We're going to add in half a cup of vegan sour cream. This is the one from Tofuti. The sour cream and the butter work really well together to make a really nice moist cake and make it light. The batter you'll see will probably be really thick, but the cake itself is gonna come out super light and fluffy. Okay, remember our vegan egg replacer? It's really nice and thick now, and this is what you want it to look like. That's the texture, so we're putting that in there as well. This recipe is gonna be so easy because it's just gonna be combining wet and dry ingredients and that's it. We're gonna go in with vanilla and almond extract, both of these. We'll do a teaspoon of vanilla. This morning I tried to make an eggnog smoothie bowl and I added in way too much almond extract. I learned my lesson. So we'll do a teaspoon of vanilla. I also saw a TikTok where a girl says that she wears vanilla extract as a perfume and I feel like I'm not opposed to it. And then we'll do half a teaspoon of the almond extract. I'm scared because I don't want to add too much now because my smoothie will taste good this morning, but it was just a lot of almond extract. We need to obviously add in eggnog. I have a three quarters cup of vegan eggnog here. I'm using one from Trader Joe's. It's an oat milk based eggnog. It smells so good. It tastes really good. So, you know, you can use, there's a bunch of them. Silk has one. Almond Breeze has one. There's a lot of brands out there that make them. This one is really good though. I like it. I like that it's oat milk based. So it's the Trader Joe's Onog. And if you want to make your own homemade recipe, you can do that too. I have a recipe on here, but it's not that good. So don't go looking for it. And now we're just going to use our mixer. We're going to mix it on a pretty low speed to start. The only goal here is just to get all of those wet ingredients combined. You can bump it up one notch on the speed, but keep it relatively low here. So the vegan sour cream might not break down all the way, but we're looking for something relatively smooth and relatively well incorporated. You don't need to blend it for more than like 30 seconds to a minute. Don't go overboard with this. We only have three dry ingredients to add. All-purpose flour. Now, people who are gonna ask me about gluten-free replacements, you can try using gluten-free all-purpose flour. I have not tried it myself. I usually don't try gluten-free alternatives because I'm not gluten-free and I know like people want the gluten-free alternatives, but there's a lot more dedicated blogs out there to gluten-free recipes. So I would just make the suggestion you can try swapping a gluten-free all-purpose flour. The Bob's Red Mill one is also a great substitute for that. It's a one-to-one, -one, you know, substitute. So 
we have our all-purpose flour, we have organic sugar, because if you didn't know, if you don't, eat, well, I almost just threw my sugar everywhere. If you don't use organic sugar, sometimes they process sugar in the US with bone char, which is kind of gross in my opinion. So just make sure you use organic sugar. You know, everyone kind of has it. I get mine like Trader Joe's or Whole Foods or somewhere like that. Even just regular food stores have it though. And also I like the Florida Crystals one too. And then in here we just have a little bit of baking powder. This probably looks so itty bitty on the camera. And that's all we're gonna do to add these in and that's it. We're gonna add in that baking powder. Come on. Aren't these pinch bowls just the cutest? I got them from RV Pottery. Sometimes I sift and sometimes I don't. It truly depends on my mood. And I'm gonna be honest, I'm not in a sifting mood today. So we're not sifting. Sifting is good and it can be really beneficial if the flour is super lumpy, but I think it'll be fine because we're gonna mix this with the hand mixer. And then our sugar. Beautiful. Now we're just going to mix this until it is combined. I'm going to mix on a very low speed because I don't want to overmix this and you may need to get a really cute little spatula and wipe down the sides of your bowl. Okay, the really cute spatula part is optional, but you know what I mean. And it's a thick batter. Okay. Our batter is looking pretty good. I'm gonna scrape it down one more time on the sides and just do one more little beating of it and then that should be good so once the mixer starts making like ribbons in the cake like the thick ribbons we're good we're good to go one of my biggest fears in life are my cakes not coming out of their pans <laughs> i seriously mean that and before i went vegan it was drinking spoiled milk to prevent any sticking i always like to use a baking spray that is made with flour this is the pam one and i just spray the heck out of these pans. I spray them really good, especially these because they're so detail oriented. I try to get into every nook and cranny of this pan. So that's my best recommendation for getting, you know, pan cooking, cooking things that will actually come out and that we don't have to deal with any sticking. I got two filled in here. I think the smarter way to do this is actually, I've tried pouring it the first time the batter directly in, but I think the better way is just to spoon in the batter. These Nordic Ware pans, I love them, and they're obviously so cute, but because we're dealing with interesting shapes here, it can be a little bit difficult to kind of really assess how much batter to put in, how to spread it out. It's easier to spoon it in, I think. Obviously, our batter is going to rise as it bakes, so we have to also leave some space. This is honestly very stressful. Like, I don't know. Do you guys ever see that guy on TikTok who makes the chocolates? I can't think of his name. And he makes these like 90 pound sharks and whales and all made out of chocolate are like, he made like a functioning telescope. And I'm just like, that is crazy because I'm freaking out over here trying to fill up a cake pan. <laughs> I'm gonna fill up our snowflakes and then we will bake this. Both of these in here, ready to go. This batter made 12 cakelets. You could also do these in a bun pan or you could do this in like a baking loaf. So we're gonna pop these in the oven at 350 Fahrenheit for probably 20-ish minutes. When it comes to baking with the Nordic Ware pans, you gotta put it on some sort of a sheet pan because it just won't sit even on your baking rack since the bottom is all grooved and designed and everything. So we'll pop these in the oven and I'll see when they come out. Having an internal dilemma because part of me is like, do I just put powdered sugar on top of them and like sprinkle it on there and just let them look cute like that? Or the other part of me is like, do I make an eggnog glaze? I could do one of each. I could do like one of the cakes with powdered sugar and one of the cakes with an eggnog glaze and just see what I like better. Decisions. So our cakelets are done. I just let them bake for 23 minutes and then I stuck a toothpick in them just to make sure that the toothpick came out clean. They look really good. So with these pans, I like to let them cool in the pan for like about like 10-ish minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. So that way it's like definitely like really set in there when you pop it out, it doesn't crumble apart and then we'll flip them out. So we're just gonna let them cool for a little bit. They're still hot. They're radiating heat, we gotta wait. The time has come, I think we can get them out of their pans. I'm going to do the snowflakes first. And I can usually can tell that it's like pretty good to go because I can hold this pan now. It's warm, but it's not hot. And I can also see that the cakes have pulled away from the sides a little bit. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take the wire rack 
and I'm going to place it over the cake thing, the cake pan, and we're going to flip it. I have a spatula here just in case I need to bang anything or like, you know, scoop anything out. But we're actually just gonna take a knife and we're gonna tap on them. Like that. And we're gonna see if anybody comes out. People might, people might not. And by people, I mean the snowflake cakes. Let's see. <gasps> All of them came out. They're perfect. Look at them. They're gorgeous. They listened. They look so good. So we're gonna do the same thing. Take the wire rack, put it over, flip it, and then we'll give everybody, you could use your hands too. Let's see if anybody popped out. <gasps> oh my goodness. How freaking cute are these? I cannot, <gasps> oh my God. I love them. Okay, I am so happy with how these turned out. They're just so freaking cute. I can't believe it. And they smell so good. I'm so happy. So from looking at them, I think I do just want to only throw a dusting of powdered sugar on them. I think that'll just be the best bet because they look so pretty. Some of the snowflakes didn't come out as well as I had hoped, but they still look cute. Like the whole scene of it looks cute and the trees look really cute. So I'll have both pans linked down below in case you want to order them. But I kind of like get myself one every season. So then like, I just keep getting more and more. <laughs> but they're just always fun to bake with because it just everything comes out looking really special and pretty. And it really wasn't too much effort. So let's throw some powdered sugar on these guys. Powdered sugar is just like the ultimate winter topping on any big tree because it looks like snow. It just looks so, so cute. I just, I'm in love with these. What I love about these recipes with these pans is that you look like a master baker. Like you look like you could be on the Great British Baking Show, but this wasn't hard work at all. This is a super easy recipe to make. It's seasonal, it's fun, it's delicious. And you have these little cakelets that just look so fancy and gorgeous, but they weren't hard to make at all. And honestly, like as much as I do love making homemade cookies, this is so much easier than cookies because the pan does all the work for you. We should do a little taste test, right? So I'm gonna grab, because I still have to take pictures, so I'm gonna try to grab one of the uglier snowflakes. This this guy kind of wasn't our best looking snowflake. So break them apart. Oh yeah, it's like super fluffy on the inside. Mmm. These are super moist on the inside. It tastes like a really fluffy vanilla cake. But all of that eggnog is. Wow, is that moist inside though? Mmm. So you're going to take half a block of firm tofu and I just cut mine up into pieces so it would fit into the blender better and you're going to pop that right in the blender. Then we're going to add in some nutritional yeast which will help give it that little bit of a cheesy umaminess to it which we don't need to be too strong but you want to put it in there and some non-dairy milk of choice unsweetened unflavored. You're going to blend this up until it is pretty smooth there can still be a little bit of texture and this is just going to make our tofu rigotta and that's really all you have to do it's pretty simple pretty straightforward pretty easy just blend it up you know you can leave it a little bit thicker in consistency if you want but should look something like this that's kind of what we're going for then we're going to add in vegan cream cheese into a bowl make sure to use a good quality one then we're going to add in that tofu ricotta that we just made followed up by well after all i scoop all this in here a lot of scooping to do get that out then we're going to add in some vanilla extract and then we're going to add in half of our powdered sugar this dip is so easy to make we're going to mix this slowly just for about 30 seconds until the sugar is dissolved. Then we're going to add in the remaining powdered sugar and then we are just going to again mix it slowly until the powdered sugar is dissolved in there so that way you don't end up with like a giant mess and covered in powdered sugar and cursing at me. <laughs> Scrape the sides of the bowl down, get everything back kind of in the middle and then we're going to 
beat it again on a higher speed for about a minute. This is gonna whip some air into the dip, make it light and fluffy and help to break everything down and get it really, really smooth and nicely incorporated. So there's no like chunks of vegan cream cheese and stuff like that, cause we don't want that. We want this to be pretty smooth. So it'll look something like this and you can see it's a thick consistency, kind of resembles pudding I guess you would say and then we're just going to add in our mini vegan chocolate chips I'm using the ones from the brand enjoy life but if you can't find minis you can just use regular size but the minis are just so cute and now we are going to fold it in fold in the chocolate chips I don't know why I keep doing that impression when I can't do a good one I stuck at it in the um the lemon blueberry cake impression as well okay so just fold them in, you know, make sure they're nice and well incorporated. You can add as many vegan chocolate chips as you like. It is totally up to you. You could even add nuts in here if you wanted to instead. Oh, look at that, beautiful. All right, now we're gonna put it in the bowl that we're gonna serve it in. We're gonna pop this in the refrigerator to chill for at least 20 minutes or until you're ready to serve. This has to sit in the fridge, okay? It can't sit out. It's gotta stay in the fridge, gotta stay nice and cold. You can crush up some waffle cones to dip in there. Very fun, very cute. Kind of like a cannoli shell, not really, but a little bit similar idea here. And then you can also pair it with fruit. I think it is delicious with strawberries. Those are really great for dipping and scooping. And that's pretty much it to serve it. I just put some extra little vegan chocolate chips on top just to make it look pretty. And then later on, I ended up crushing some waffle cone on top, but that's totally for aesthetic purposes and just to make it look fun. And I think this is so cute, so easy to make. It was enjoyed by non-vegans. So we have a non-vegan stamp of approval. And I think it is just a really great recipe for summer because you don't have to think about turning the oven on. And it's, like I said, it's so easy to make. I mean, it literally takes like, I don't even know, 15, 20 minutes. It's so, so incredibly easy. Today, we're making an apple coffee crumb cake. It's gonna be so good. We're gonna have layers of like a sweet vanilla -y cake on the bottom. Then we got the apples, then a crumb streusel topping on top, and then you could add a little bit of powdered sugar glaze on top. It's easy to make, it's seasonal, it's delicious. So let's just do it. The hair is up, so you know we mean business. All right, so before we start, I do just want you to know I'm using a kitchen scale today, and kitchen scales are so great. They're inexpensive, they're cheap, they make baking easier for several reasons. They make your baking more accurate because you're measuring everything out in grams, and you also don't need to dirty up as many like measuring cups and measuring spoons and things like that. So get a kitchen scale. They're like $8, and they will make your life so much better for baking. We're gonna start by making our streusel topping. So that's gonna be the nice, big, crummy bits on top that is probably my favorite part. To do this is really simple. You're gonna start off with some flour. We're gonna do three quarters of a cup or 90 grams of flour. That was 100, we'll live with it. Just means more crumb topping. And then we're gonna do a little dash of cinnamon. I'm gonna tell you guys a secret. I will just usually like give a rough estimate. I don't really, measure my my like spices and stuff just kind of like go with what you think looks good then we want some brown sugar make sure you're using organic brown sugar organic sugar for everything so that way you know it's definitely vegan we're going in with two-thirds cup 60 grams get a spoon or a spatula mix up your little dry ingredients so they're all well incorporated I'm going to be using Earth Balance baking sticks. They just make it a lot easier for baking, honestly. And we need half a cup of butter. So it's gonna be like just one of these guys. Now, the way that I like to do this is I first like to just cut the butter with a knife into a bunch of little pieces. I'll just take my butter and go like this. And I'll just throw it into that bowl, make little slabs. This butter is cold. Like it's slightly softened, but it is cold butter. Now, I have all my butter in there like this. I'm gonna take my knife and start to just keep breaking up the butter even further with the knife and cutting the butter into the dry ingredients. Now, once I got the butter into smaller pieces, like how we have here, looking something like this, getting in there with your hands, because our hands are our best tools and you're gonna just start clumping and squeezing together the brown sugar and the flour. And the bigger the clumps you make, the more, like the bigger crumb you're gonna have. So 
I try to always go for bigger clumps because I love when the crumbs are really big. And I'm sure you're thinking, well, why wouldn't we just crumble with our hands from the beginning? The butter pieces are just too big. It would just, you would be there like way too long. Sometimes I even like to like mix it up too because the vegan butter like can form these big bits on themselves. So I'm just like keep breaking it up. We got the crumbs done. So now we can just start making our cake. We're gonna go in with all the wet ingredients first. So I'm gonna just start vanilla extract. Again, this is one of those things I just say measure with your heart, teaspoon, whatever that means to you. However much vanilla you like. This is vegan egg replacer. All you do is mix the vegan egg replacer powder with water. This is the one from Bob's Red Mill. It's mostly potato starch based. So just pour that in there. It's gonna help to like thicken our batter up and it works like an egg. I have melted vegan butter right here. So just pour that in. Non-dairy milk. I love Ripple. It's the only one I use. You guys should know this if you watch my videos. We're going in with three quarters of a cup, 180 milliliters. Our last like wet ingredient, we're using some vegan sour cream. This is my first time using the one from Foragers, like the first time I made this recipe. Not today, in this moment, but it was good. I liked it. So this one's good, but I also like the Tofuti one. We're gonna go in with a third of a cup of vegan sour cream, and that's going to be 80 grams of a vegan sour cream. This one's cashew and coconut based. Now we're gonna mix up all of our wet ingredients. So we're just whisking them up to mix them all together. Nothing very exciting is going on. And now we just have to add in our dry ingredients. So we're gonna go in with some sugar. Again, organic granulated sugar. I really like the Florida crystals one. Let me just look at my book to remember. Okay, three quarters of a cup, 185 grams. We're gonna do our baking powder, which is going to be two teaspoons, which is going to be about eight grams of baking powder. I live dangerously and I just start pouring things in. The trick is if you're using the scale just to go slow because it adds up quicker than you think it does. We're going to add in our flour. We're gonna do 270 grams, two and a quarter cup. And now we'll just mix it up and you don't wanna over mix this. You're just gently combining and mixing everything. This batter is thicker, like it's a thicker cake batter, so don't be alarmed. If you're like, I feel like this should be a little bit thinner. It's not, this is what it's supposed to be like. I just always like to give a few good scoops underneath to make sure that there's no dry flour under there. Oh my goodness, guys, I love cake batter. Like I would rather eat cake better than the cake. I look forward to licking the spatula after this. <laughs> Let's discuss our apples for a second. So first of all, I live in a house with other people and I needed two apples for this recipe and there were two apples hanging around, but then I looked today and there's only one apple. So just know this recipe does call for two apples, but unfortunately I'm down to one apple today. We'll make it work. It's not that big of a deal. And then let's talk about the apple choice. Now for years, I think myself and many people were told that a Granny Smith apple is the best apple for baking. As I've gotten older and I've experimented more, I've used other apples and it always turns out great. So I just say use whatever apple you like, whatever apple you have on hand. It'll be great. Due to only having one apple, I am going to chop it up a little bit smaller than I probably normally would if I had the two. So just wanted to give you that heads up. I always make it my life mission to try to get the apple peel off in one peel. Like, oh yeah, pretty much. Look at that, look at that. Look how funny, okay. It smells so good. This morning when I woke up, it was cold outside guys. So today actually when I'm filming this video, it's August 30th or it's actually, it's August 31st. Oh my goodness. So basically it's September when I'm filming this video, but it was free. It was so cold. It was 65 degrees this morning. I got a nine by nine inch baking dish right here. I'm a little bit of a nervous Nelly. So I always like, sorry, my camera keeps going out of focus right now. It'll cooperate in a second. I always like to give just a quick little spray. We're going in of course with our batter. And the nice part about letting the batter sit for a few minutes while we chop the apples, it helps that baking powder to activate. Now you're going to spread this out with a spatula. You're probably gonna be looking at it and be like, Francesca, this seems so low, but the batter rises a lot. So don't worry about that. 
We got our batter down. We're gonna start scattering our apples all around. Oh my goodness. I just dropped one of my valuable pieces of apple. Do your best really spread it out. Actually, this was totally fine since I chopped the apple up so small. You may be hearing the oven going on and off because it's a gas oven, so it like heats up and then it stops. It's time for that crummy topping that we made. Trying to distribute the crumbs as best I can. I'm, th I'm thinking very seriously while doing this. And what happens is as this bakes, everything just spreads out and fills in. So do your best to get everything covered properly, but don't worry if it doesn't feel like it's good enough. It will do what it's supposed to. This is ready to go in the oven. It's going in the oven 350 for 45 to 55 minutes, depending on your oven. So I'll see you guys in about an hour. Oh my goodness, I wish you could smell how good it smells in here right now. We've got still about 15 minutes on the cake, but it mm, was like fall and cinnamon and apples. It just smells so good. While I'm waiting for the cake to finish baking, I'm going to just make a quick powdered sugar glaze. You're literally just going to need organic powdered sugar and a little bit of water. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, totally optional. You could always dust the cake just with plain powdered sugar on top before serving. You can go crazy and make like a caramel drizzle for the top. You can leave it plain. It's really whatever you want to do. I love the little bit of the powdered sugar glaze. I just think it looks pretty. So I'll just make that really quickly. Very simple. We're going to add in a little bit of our powdered sugar. Add it in just a dot of water and then you can mix it up. You can add as much or as little water as you like, depending on how thick and drizzly you want yours to be. Just mix until it's all incorporated. There you go. Easiest little glaze in the world. It's time to take our cake out. Oh my goodness, this is beautiful. I love it. Look at this. I mean, this is pretty close to perfection. There is so much to love going on right here. This cooked for 50 minutes. I did the toothpick test once already, but I'll do it again for you guys. And it comes out clean, which is what we want. Now you have to test your patience because we do need to let the cake cool for about a half hour before we add on any of that like powdered sugar glaze. I actually, to speed up the process, just pop mine in the fridge. Hopefully that'll get it cooler a little bit quicker. And then we can just add that glaze on and then we can enjoy it and mm, so good. If you need any written out recipe instructions, if you need, you know, anything that you want to know about the recipe, you could check out my blog post, plantfullybasedblog.com. Always linked in the description box down below. It has any information you may need. I also write out all the ingredients in the description box down below. And I also link any products that I think you might need, like things you may need to order and stuff. So always check out the description box because I put a lot of stuff in there for you guys. I have no patience. Let's put the glaze on. And I just kind of go back and forth with it. Now you can cut this into as many pieces as you like. Removing a piece of cake, like the first piece is always the most stressful. Mm. That's the inside. Beautiful. The longer it cools, the more the crumb will be together. Like I said, I'm being a little impatient here, but I just want to show you it inside because it's gorgeous all right we're by the window in some really harsh sunlight for a second just because i really want you to be able to see the layers on this cake like you have that nice crummy streusel and you have the apple then you have that soft cake and it just looks amazing like this is so good i'm so proud of this recipe i love it so much i've been making it for years it's such a good one just if you love apple if you love coffee cake if you love these little crummy bits then you have to make this of course we got to take a bite I'm trying to get you guys in there. That was a terrible, oh my gosh. Okay, also though, look at this crumb. Hold on, just like the makeup girls. Look at this crumb. Mm. The crumbs are my favorite part. So good. So like I just mentioned, we're using soft tofu for this. And if you look, it has the most amount of water. So it has the least amount of calories and the least amount of protein. Before we do that, we're gonna make our vegan lady fingers. So we're gonna combine some chickpea flour and water together to make kind of like a chickpea egg replacer. Definitely go check out the blog post for my notes on egg replacers, chickpea flour, and all this stuff. You're gonna whisk it up until it is nice and thick and smooth like this. Put it to the side for a second. 
Then I'm measuring out our organic cane sugar. Make sure to use organic sugar so that way it is vegan friendly, not potentially processed with bone char. Then add your vegan chickpea egg in there and you're gonna mix it up until it kind of almost makes like a dough. Just keep mixing and mixing. You'll see the end texture in a second. It kind of looks like, I don't know, Play-Doh, wet sand, whatever you wanna call it, but it looks like a dough already. So then we're going to add in some vanilla extract. Give that another little mix together. Next up, we're going to add in our all-purpose flour. Before I add it in, I'm just going to take my whisk, run it through, get out any large clumps. You can also sift it, whatever you like to do. Add that into our bowl. Then we're going to add in some baking powder and cornstarch and water. And now I'm going to slowly incorporate more water as we go. So you can see I'm going to start mixing it. Obviously, it's going to be way too dry at first. So then I'll add in a little more water. I'll keep mixing, add a little more water. And you'll notice I'm using my kitchen scale. I really like using the kitchen scale for baking because baking is science and it's very precise. So I highly suggest you use a kitchen scale. Then I'm going to get in there with my hands, nice clean hands, no rings or anything. And we are just going to start kneading our dough together until it looks something like this. I can form it into a ball. It will be slightly sticky and tacky, so don't worry about that, but as you can see, it's manageable. I can move it around. Then we're gonna scoop one tablespoon, approximately, of our dough, and you're gonna take your hands, again, nice clean hands, and you're just gonna roll it between your hands like this to form it kind of into a oblong shape. Is that the right word here, oblong? I think it is. And then I'm just gonna like round it off, but we're making like a lady finger shape here. And that's pretty much it. As you do this, the dough might start to stick to your hands a little bit. So just wash your hands in between if all of a sudden you're like kind of covered in the dough from this. And these vegan lady fingers come out really, really good. And I probably should have spaced them out on the pan a little bit more. You'll see after we bake them in a few minutes, they get kind of stuck together, but honestly, it's not that big of a deal. So we're gonna bake at 350 Fahrenheit for 14 minutes, pop those in the oven, all done. They're gonna come out to look something like this, as you could see. Some of them kind of got stuck together, but again, it's just like not a big deal. I'll rip them apart later. Let these cool. Let's work on our cream. So we're taking that soft tofu and then we're gonna take some vegan cream cheese. I'm actually using the one from Tofuti because I really like that one. So we're gonna put everything in the blender. So. I drained my soft tofu, adding that in there. Then we're gonna add in about half a cup of vegan cream cheese. Then we're gonna add in some vanilla extract, more organic sugar, and then we're gonna add in your non-dairy milk of choice. This ripple milk is so good. If you haven't tried it, can't recommend it enough. And that's pretty much it. The cream is very, very easy to make. And you're just gonna blend that until it is nice and smooth. And when you taste this on its own, it might have a slight taste of tofu, but I promise in the whole tiramisu altogether, it doesn't taste like that. Our lady fingers are all cooled, so as you can see, they're nice and like hardened up. The bottoms get a little bit golden, and I'm, they should be pretty easy to rip off. Like they might stick a little bit, but it's not that big of a deal if some of that sticks on the paper, don't worry. And then you can see they're like really easy to break up just in half. So now we're going to start dunking our lady fingers in some espresso, or you can use coffee, whatever you like, and just kind of dunk them in there. Be careful with them, they might be a little fragile, and pop them in your pan. I'm using a nine by 11 baking dish. If your lady finger breaks, do not worry. Do not worry. Scoop it out, pop it in there, it doesn't matter. For these little sides that I can't fit a whole lady finger in, I'm just gonna cut them into half, into thirds, like whatever I can kind of squeeze in there just to fit so there's some nice structure in there. And then we're gonna add our cream on top of here. So just pour about half of it right on there. And you can then use like a spoon, a spatula, a knife, whatever, to just evenly distribute that out. And you'll see it's pretty thin right now. It's gonna thicken up when we chill it in the fridge. And then we're just going to layer again. Italians, we love our layers. Lasagna, tiramisu, we like layers. So I have a little espresso left over. I'm just pouring that on top so that way it doesn't get wasted. And then we'll add the rest of our cream on there that we made beautiful oh i could just eat this by itself spreading it all out again with my spoon just to make sure to cover everything really well now we're testing your patience cover this and you leave it alone for the next eight hours or overnight if you're really on a time crunch five to six hours could work but the longer this sits the better it gets it is now the next day. I let this sit for a full 24 hours. You can see that cream is thickened up. Even some of the lady fingers absorbs a little bit. We're going to top it with the unsweetened cocoa powder. You can just take like, I'm using a kind of a strainer here just to sift it over top. And that's it. Now we can finally, we can finally cut into this. And that first piece to get out is a little rough, okay? It's not the best. It doesn't always look the prettiest, but we got it out. We did it. And whew, beautiful gorgeous makes me want to sing because it's so good i mean come on does that not just look mm. and like i know it's not the most beautiful tiramisu but you don't want your tiramisu to look pretty if the tiramisu looks neat and perfect and layered i literally do not want it i want i want it to look like this because then i know it's good and also my non-vegan grandma took a bite and was amazed